Hey, welcome to I'm Refocus Radio. Once again, we are here, and man, it's a new, fresh day of the week. And you know what that time is? It's Monday. Every day should be a weekend, though. Like, I'm not all into that, oh, uh, it's Monday. I have to be depressed. No, nah, if you love what you do in life, it's going to be a Saturday every day for you, at least for me. So I hope you are, are doing well. We have a special guest today who's going to really boost your emotions to be more positive and more inspiring because she is a very inspiring person herself. She is someone that can really, maybe if you get the money blues, she can help you out with the word life balance because she's a coach in that realm. She is Arlene Miller, and we have a special time with her for about 25 minutes on this show. I just want to say thank you for clearing your calendar. How are you doing today? Well, thank you for having me. Right back at you. I'm doing great today. Thanks for asking. Before we dive into today's topic, kind of share with the audience a little bit about what brought you to this profession and what was your story before you did this? Well, um... At the age of 15, I decided that I wanted to be an attorney, which really surprised my parents. We haven't, we didn't have any attorneys in the family, and especially not a woman. My father was a very traditional man, but they did support me. They put me through college and law school. So I've had um, two firms, one as a solo practitioner in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. And when my son was nine, I moved from Cleveland with him across country to a suburb of Denver and sold my business in Cleveland and bought into a small partnership boutique firm in a, a town called Longmont, Colorado. And so um, I've gone from, I've been a family law practitioner where I've helped people get divorced or dissolve their marriages or represented children in abuse cases and been appointed by the court. I got burned out on that. That was really hard. And then I became a commercial attorney. I help businesses collect their debts. I really believe that if you provide a service or a product, you should be paid for them. Um, and several years ago, I just got kind of burned out. I wasn't been an attorney for many, many years. And during the last, um, I don't know, five or six years of the law firm, I got a diploma in coaching and mentoring. And I also got a diploma in transformational holistic counseling. I loved it. I applied everything I learned um, in the firm and with my family, with my son, but it just felt like I needed a change. So we sold the firm and I opened Jewel Consultancy and I do coaching and mentoring and transformational mentoring and um, soul readings. And I really enjoy that. And um, I guess the only other thing to know about me is that when I opened my first business, I found out I was pregnant. So um, I had been a working mother my whole life. Um, it was really interesting to um, have my son born in the first year of owning a business. My family was in Kentucky, so I didn't have any family support. My ex-husband um, was working like 70, 80 hours a week. I didn't have support from him. So that's part of the reason that I am so passionate about helping women as a coach, because I know what it feels like um, to be like, how can I balance my life? How can I get some sanity here? So that's a little bit about me. With that kind of background, like you was already busy, busy. Uh, you had a lot on your plate, uh, not just in the professional world, but like you said, being a mother, that that's commendable. And to have that understanding what it is really like, like reality check, what it is really like having to have that work-life balance. For you, as before you start um, this whole um, movement and journey in the professional world of coaching uh, women, what was it like for you to understand the learning learning curve as far as like how you can be a great mother and be a professional at the same time in the field that you're in that was demanding? Oh, my God. It was um, a big learning curve. I remember I first thought, well, I can just have my son in my office. I put this little swing going back and forth that got zero work done. Um, so I found a really wonderful woman who took care of children in her home, really loving and caring and had kind of the same kind of values that I did. And uh, she helped me as I was, you know, I wasn't working full time the first like couple of years of his life. It just wasn't possible. I couldn't, you know, just abandon a newborn. And so and then when she later retired, um, her daughter, who's in an adult, became like, you know, a nanny, not a full-time nanny, but part-time to help me with him, to get him to all of his stuff. So um, 
I did the best that I could to be a professional and give him the time that he needed and um, make sure they got to all of his activities because he, you know, he had karate and he had chess and whatever else he wanted to do. So it was a big learning curve, but I guess one of the things I'm really grateful for, and I didn't know I did it to begin with, but I'm really grateful that I went into business for myself because then I could set my own hours. Um, I could decide how that was going to work instead of working for some big company where he was pretty much set in stone. And then, you know, you either choose between your kids or the business. And, and um, I'm really glad I never had to do that. That would have been really hard. Yeah, as a mother, it sounded like when you were listening to those activities that you had your child involved with, how important was that for you personally to uh, not just support whatever it is that piqued their interest but also just kind of show that you're available to see them progress in those activities. Yeah. Well, it was a big search thing to find out what worked for him because when I got divorced when he was three, he developed ADHD. And so he was kind of bouncing off the walls and I was looking for ways to help him. So he, I, put him, I had him in all kinds of activities like soccer and football, which he didn't like at all. And, um, you know, just to see what would resonate with him, where he could get out that energy, what would like click with him, um, more of a singing heart. And by the time he was around nine, well, nine, my, my father taught him how to play chess. And by the time he was 11, he was taking, um, lessons from a chess master and traveling around and doing some tournaments. And I put him in karate and he loved that because he got to break boards and, you know, do all the, the, the noises that you make with uh, karate and stuff like that and get like recognition badges like they used to do in Boy Scout. So it was a lot of trial and error, you know, because he needed places to get out that energy, but he also had that um, intellect and curiosity. Um, so it was a, a big learning curve experience. I'm just glad that he found, you know, what he loves. When you found your time to start your business and your own practice to uh, help women and coach them, what was your strategy and, and fine tuning how you wanted to coach as far as your philosophy you believe and just the different ways that you go about with resources within your services? Well, I was really lucky that I um, I graduated from the Global Coaching Academy, which really focused on heart-centered coaching and knowing always that the client as a coach always has all the answers inside of them and learning how to ask powerful questions and how to reflect back and, and how to share my intuition and knowing, but always handing the conversation back to the client. Because if I hear a certain situation with a client, I could jump in with my own two cents about what worked for me but it's likely not to necessarily be what works for her. And so I think it's really important to honor each of my clients for where they're at and where they're coming from so that they can make the decisions for themselves. Because I don't know about you, if I make a decision for myself, I'm much more likely to follow through and stick with it than have someone else tell me that I should do this or that. So that's basically, you know, my philosophy that my clients are wise women. They have the answers inside of them. It's my job to partner with them and walk alongside of them to help them find out where to from here and then how I can best support and champion them in that process. I love that because uh, sometimes you can have a cookie cutter service that is more like uh, transactional, where it's like, okay, you sign up, uh, have you for a amount of time, and goodbye. And if you want to come again, cha-ching, let's start over the, the system again. How important was it for you to separate yourself from the masses out there of everyone else? Well, they can be offering this similar service uh, as well. How did you distinguish how you wanted to separate yourself from how everyone else does coaching? Well, I don't really look at what everybody else does. I'm sure there's lots of great coaches out there. And some of them are more like consultants telling you what to do. W whatever they want to do is fine. I just feel like I'm not in competition with anybody. You know, I'm, if people resonate with me, you know, they, they, they have this affinity. They're going to be drawn to me the same way they're going to be drawn to another coach. So all I'm doing is being myself. And I think when we're ourselves, we end where um, we're really, it's a heart singing experience of what we do when we get out there and make ourselves known and available, the right and perfect clients will come to us. And even if they're not quite right, there's always going to be something there that's learning for them and for, or for me as a coach. 
And so I, I just always welcome that. I just, I really don't focus on other clients. I'm interested in them and I sometimes can learn from what they do, but I'm, I'm not going to compare myself to them because, you know, they're doing what they're doing and I'm, I'm sure they, they're helping a lot of people as well. When you are helping uh, your clients, was the first step that you try to uh, observe with your client as you get to know them possibly and filter through their life uh, experiences? What's some of the things that you try to uh, focus on as you're trying to get the beginning stages uh, covered with your client? Well, I really like to notice a couple of things. The first one is that when I ask them a certain question, what really lights them up? We can like feel their vibration shifted and they're just a different person and, and, and that they were, their light, their eyes are shining. And the other thing I like to notice is what kind of patterns and programs are they carrying around the way they're talking to themselves that's dragging them down and they haven't let go. So really what, what obstacles do they need to let go and where do they have a singing heart? I mean, those are a couple of the things that I always like to really pay attention to and maybe, you know, begin to explore because oftentimes as a coach, the, the, what the client comes to us with, is like the surface thing. It's not the depth of the ocean that's underneath that they really need to explore to let go of what's not working for them so they can step into this new place of where they want to be. And so I also have to be aware of, I call it, what is the elephant in the room? What are they not talking about? Or what are they not even aware of that's there that's um, underneath the surface that's holding them back or, or, or dragging them down? When you deal with someone who opens up about their frustrations, whether it's uh, work or personal life in the home, are there any common threads, generally speaking, where you, you're like, okay, this is probably what's triggering that right now in your life? Or is it very complex web where you just kind of had to listen to them for a long time as far as how they unpack their um, personal battles? Well, I don't really do that because I feel like if I hold a, a huge space of unconditional love that's judgment free, that's the biggest gift that I can give to people. Because most of the time they just need to talk things out. And as they do, questions are going to come up for me to ask them by the by like those key words that, that come out of their mouths, you know, and um, I can ask them those kind of questions, you know, what something needs, means to them, how is this working or not working for you in your life, and help them to move stuff, move through stuff. But I really feel like from my experience, that oftentimes when we talk to people, all they're doing is thinking about what they're going to say about themselves and their life while they're listening to me. They don't really care what I'm saying. They don't want to understand me. It's not that they're bad. That's just how we're programmed. And so if I give people a different experience where I hold that big loving space, there's no judgment. Anything you want to share about your life is fine. And we can take things from there. A lot of healing in itself comes from that. So I don't have to think about what I'm going to ask them. I just, you know, let that conversation flow. And I am mindful. I'll, I'll jot down a few notes about what are these key words that they're using that I can really ask you, you know, what's the meaning of that? What would you like to do with that? Um, but I think sometimes some coaches work too hard. I let my clients do the work and I um, sort of walk alongside them like that. Once again, let's not refocus radio talking to our guest today, Arlene Miller. Go to her website, jewelconsultancy.com. Speaking of burnout and, and uh, well, actually, that was going to be my question. Speaking of work-life balances, burnout is something that could be a hot topic in, in today's world. Be, people have busy schedules. Uh, you have meetings you have to attend to. You have a calendar that seems to keep growing by the minute. And it's like, what is going on? And then you have to breathe. When you are dealing with uh, clients that are business professionals and they just have a lot going on your plate, how do you find yourself kind of maybe sharing maybe your personal uh, life experience? Because you were a mother and you had a professional field and you had to balance a busy calendar as well. Um, usually, unless, usually I don't do that unless I'm mentoring somebody because coaching is knowing the answers are in the client. Mentoring is more, um, I'm sharing my wisdom with you so that you can stand on your sh my shoulders and you don't have to go what I went through and you can make decisions from your life from there. Um, what I do find as, you know, cause I work with 
um, quite a few attorneys. And I'm a, a member of the Colorado Women's Bar Association. I'm the only grandmother there, but I really feel to support them by being a part of the organization and serving on some committees. But oftentimes what I've seen with a lot of these women is they they eventually get to the point that they make a decision on their own. You know, they might have been in um, criminal defense or something and going to trials and they, they switch to being an appellate attorney. So they're just writing briefs. They find a way in their law practice to make room so to breathe so that they can have time for their kids, for their partner and for their life. And um, I know so a lot of what they deal with are very bright and professional or just very bright period. You know, it doesn't, they don't have to necessarily be professional women and they're, they've already thought about a lot of things that they could do to switch around their life. And they just sometimes just need a sounding board of someone who doesn't judge them to really have the courage just to try something new and how it's going to work for them. People sometimes uh, are told about being uh, able to show grace to them, uh, for themselves, show a little uh, compassion for themselves and, and not sab so self-sabotage. Uh, how do you talk to women as far as like, how they cannot be in their own way as far as like being too harsh on themselves. Yeah. I really like to help women work with their inner coach instead of focusing on their inner critic, because of course the law of attraction is what you focus on is what you're going to get more of in your life. And so by the questions I ask and the space that I hold and the reflections I give, they can become aware as I did when I was younger, because I was totally unaware of how I had an inner critic that was running wild and how I was talking to people about myself and my life. I didn't realize how I was attracting, you know, really dysfunctional relationships to myself. So um, knowing that and, and having lived through that, I can ask them questions to help them and provide comments and inspiration so that they can begin to um, talk to themselves like they were their own best friend or someone they really love and care about. Because we are very good as women or anybody of like nurturing and supporting and champion the people that we care about, but we haven't been trained or given permission oftentimes to give that to ourselves. So I like to help them to turn that around and say, hey, you've already got the skills and tools there, you know, play with giving that to yourself and see how that begins to, fe to feel because often it's like we're a ship going in one direction and it takes time to turn that ship around to have that uh, direction be something that's more compassionate and loving and caring with ourselves. And, um, you know, I help them to be patient and kind and tolerant with themselves as they're going through that process. Some of the listeners right now, they can go to your website, uh, consultancy, uh, dot com. When you give options of the services you provide kind of walk us through real fast uh, the different options that people may have when they go visit your website well you can choose coaching and coaching is basically um, i help you to focus on goals or aspirations or something that you want to change in your life um, something that you want to move through and coaching is more like i was sharing it's more like i'm i'm asking you powerful questions i'm sharing insights and I am allowed, I know that you have the answers within yourself. If you'd rather have something that's more hands-on when I'm sharing my wisdom with you, then choose mentoring. And transformational mentoring is in all areas. It can be about helping you have more of an attitude of gratitude. It can be helping you let go of patterns and programs that aren't working for you. It's about helping you to have clear, strong, and appropriate boundaries so that you are now no longer a people pleaser or somebody's doormat. So there's all of those kind of things that whatever is not working for you in your life that you need to let go of. Maybe it's certain relationships that are really toxic that you need to say goodbye to. Um, and then I do soul readings, which are a form of mentoring. I'm not a psychic, but I do heart connect with people when I do a soul reading with them. I use psychic tarot oracle cards. They pick some, I pick some, and I can do that over the over the internet. And basically with the cards that they pick and I pick, I can heart connect and share with them opportunities that are available, challenges and obstacles that are in the way, ways that they can move around those obstacles and challenges and maybe some tools or skills or ways of being that they can practice in their life to um, step into more positivity so that they are working more with their inner coach and letting that inner critic go. So those are the three things that I offer. Um, I also do um, facilitate um, weekly um, like meditation classes that are like a half an hour long that are about um, um, energetically cleansing and clearing our field to get rid of toxic toxicity. I can say that and fill ourselves with more love. Um, 
And so I do that as well. It's just like, you know, a one-off thing whenever you you want to join that, those classes that I offer. You mentioned uh, meditation. Uh, that's something that a lot of people talk about and a lot of people just kind of wing about it. Like, let me Google that and see what that actually means. For those listening, uh, what are some of the things that they can appreciate from you and how you try to explore meditation? Well, I think it's really important that if you're if you're pondering meditation, you'd really like to be more calm and everything in your life. That don't put your don't make expectations of yourself. Just say, okay, I'm going to start five minutes a day. I'm going to practice some breath work. They have all sorts of videos on all kinds of meditations on YouTube, but just practice like breathing in through your nose and out through your nose and having your out breath longer than your in breath. Maybe try it for, for five minutes. Maybe you can put on some really calm music or just have a quiet space, either inside or in nature. What that does is it takes you out of fight or flight mode because if you're anxious and stressed, you're just breathing from up here and maybe you're even holding your breath. And what this does is it oxygenates your body and physiologically it tells you, hey, it's okay to release and to relax and let go. So it works with you energetically. It works with you on the physical level. And, you know, you, you can practice something like that for five minutes. You know, you don't have to sit there like this and go, mm. you know, that's sort of like, there's so many different ways to meditate. Or if you're a nature girl like me, go out in nature, but don't make it a power walk. At least for five to 15 minutes of that time, walk and enjoy and appreciate the beauty around you. Use it a time to breathe deeply. Use it a time to really appreciate all the beauty that's around us in our life when it comes to nature. She, I find her very healing and clearing and supportive. And so I guess those are two really simple things you can do. I mean, if you're really curious, there are many, many kinds of meditations on YouTube. Um, I offer um, more of a healing kind, um, which you can sign up on my website. It's inexpensive. So I guess that would be the beginning steps I would share, you know, with your listeners. Let's not really focus right on talking to our guest today, Arlene Miller. When you see how you were able to transition from your professional career into having your own business, your own brand, what has the journey been like for you as far as just your marketing approach, uh, building your clientele, uh, retaining uh, recurring clients or referrals? What has that uh, learning curve been like for you? And did you take some things from your professional career as a good practice source for your business? Yeah, I, I think I took a lot from my pro professional career as an attorney because I was the marketer for the law firm. And I was involved in a, a couple of organizations where I went through a lot of leadership per, uh, positions where I led committees and stuff like that, where I organized um, like business meetings um, for the, like the West Coast um, in, in the law practice. And so I had a lot of experience of working with a lot of people that didn't necessarily always come together. And um, so that really gave me the foundation of how to, how to build a practice, you know, and basically it's, it's, it's talking to people, it's getting to know people, it's getting out there, maybe doing speaking or, you know, providing some services and making yourself known. Podcasts are a great way to do that, of course. And, um, just offering, you know, things here and there to to assist people to step into a new place and um, allowing that word of mouth to spread. If women entrepreneurs out there are listening, uh, CEOs of, of their own business companies, if you were to give someone listening right now who's a woman or she's her own boss and she feels like professionally she may have plateaued, like she's maybe not in the bad spot, but she's not in a spot where she's seeing massive growth. Based on your personal experience being in business, what's some core foundational um, practices that you try to implement in your business that has seemed to help you get over those plateau seasons? Well, it feels like that the the personal, one of the things is like the personal approach, because even if your business has plateaued, you're still dealing with people. You're dealing with your clients. You're dealing with maybe groups of people that you um, connect with um, as a support group. You know, when you treat people with dignity and respect and you do what I'm sharing with you as a coach, where you are a really um, deep, heartfelt, empathetic listener, 
and you support and champion the people that you connect with who could send you clients, including your own current clients, you know, people are going to remember that. Of course, you can follow up with emails or different specials, but you really have to be careful that you don't bombard people because, you know, people, we get so much stuff, so many emails and everything already. Um, You can also focus by getting out there the way I do with podcasts. You can focus by maybe joining a mastermind group or some sort of group in your profession where you can meet other people or some group in a, in a business where you could possibly have clients, but you don't want to spread yourself too thin. You know, Um, I'm not in your area of, of business, but maybe I think oftentimes that we try to look to everybody else to tell us what to do when really we all already have the intuition knowing inside of ourselves a few small things, steps that we could do to help increase our business. But what happens is that we procrastinate, we put it to the side and we don't make it happen. So just maybe ask yourself, what have, what have I been telling myself that I could do to really um, step up my business and haven't been doing? And listen to that and make it the thing that you do first thing in the morning. And I love that book um, called Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. It's just like, whatever you're procrastinating, whatever is giving you stress, that, that's called the biggest, ugliest frog there is. You eat that first. And then you do the rest of your day. And that way you've, you've, you've um, taken care of that one thing that's been on your mind, that's been weighing you down, that's been causing you stress, and you're beginning to take those steps forward. Once again, let's not refocus radio talking to our guest today, Arlene Miller. You also have additional resources on your website that people can go to, and you have videos. Uh, and that's prior why I want to ask about uh, what advice we give for women who are also entrepreneurs and business of women out there because you have source of information that people can tune in on your YouTube channel. If you can, uh, for our audience, let, let us know what's your YouTube channel name and how can they stay in contact with what you do in the future? Well, my YouTube channel is just Arlene Cohen Miller, C-O-H-E-N is the middle name. Um, but also on my website, what I what I posted, and this is all free, is the calm and like collected um, series to tell you how to calm, be calm and, and soothing and, and bring yourself out of that stress. And I also have a leadership series of videos that, you know, how you step into more leadership in your life, you know, kind of the question you just asked me. I also have a very, very, very extensive blog with any kind of subject you would want in the area of work-life balance and beyond. And so all those articles are free. Um, they're there. Um, I just added to them for years. And so um, if you have questions, they're, they're into different kinds of subcategories so you can find out what you're looking for. So um, you're welcome to come there to jewelconsultancy.com and find out that free stuff that could give you the answer that you you have been looking for. Well, you're listening to this. Make sure you share with a friend. Make sure you go to omnifocusradio.com where you can find this episode. But make sure you, more importantly, go to our guest, jewelconsultancy.com. We've been talking to Arlene Miller. Like I always want to say thank you for your time. Well, thank you for having me. It's been really fun being here. <laughs>